Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hymnology, a show about psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. My name is Sawyer. Thank you so much for joining. Today, we have a topic that I'm sure is interesting to many of you, and that is the topic of retuning hymns, or hymns retuned. Think about your favorite hymn. Now think about it sounding completely different than how you used to hear it. That is what we're going to talk about today. More importantly, we're going to talk about older hymns that maybe you've never heard before that were in circulation hundreds of years ago. And we're going to talk about how some awesome artists are taking those old hymns and retuning them to make them to where your church can worship with them today. On today's show, I have two amazing guests, Kenny and Claire Hilliard. Kenny and Claire are singer-songwriters out of Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, Kenny is a worship pastor, and they work together to retune hymns. And they have a brand new album out right now called Are You Weary? And I hope that you'll hang around to hear some of Are You Weary, but also their story and kind of how they work on their process of retuning hymns and why it's important to them. So if you love hymns and you love to hear hymns in a new, fresh way, please hang around and listen to the rest of this interview. But today, our guests are Kenny and Claire Hilliard. And thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, if you would, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Claire, I know whenever we met at um, the Liturgy um, Collective, you kind of told us a little bit about your story. But if you will, um, share just kind of your, your background. Sure. It is a long story, yeah. but I'll try to make it short. Should I tell it or should you? Yeah, yeah you're good. I trust you. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, the trying to make a long story short, Kenny and I met uh, in college and we played music together and that's how we met. Okay. And, um, and where did you guys go to school? North Greenville University in South Carolina. Okay. All right. Yeah. And, um, uh, we, we did that, we played music, and then Kenny decided that he wanted to go to seminary. That scared me a little bit at first, <laughs> but it was great. Everything. It was great in the end, we're thankful. Yeah. We, we, we went happened. to Southeastern yeah. Seminary in Raleigh, okay. North Carolina. All right. Um, he did that, and we kind of took a turn from really focusing on music to just focusing on serving our church, him working on his studies, me trying to serve my home and my kids. Okay. And I did academic work for a number of years. I did PhD work at Southeastern and then uh, did some adjunct professorial teaching for okay. a while. And yeah, yeah. so we kind of stepped away from music for a bit. I gotcha. We still served our church with music, yeah. but we weren't trying to really pursue making our own, even though in a way we kind of kept, couldn't help but keep yeah. making our own. Yeah, we kept writing we songs. Do. We weren't just trying to pursue it professionally. Okay. Um, okay. And he, in the middle of his PhD program, he, uh, was a pastor at a church in outside of Asheville. And okay. while he was there, he had just a number of health problems that came up. Right. And um, oh, it, it started with a, with a brain tumor that's since been resolved. But then in that process, uh, he, his other autoimmune issues and such started to come to light all the more. Yeah. This is really the short story of it. There's really yeah, just hey, a long story of so saying much. that <laughs> yeah. the Lord was uh, just very evidently showed his hand and his love, even in the midst of a really, really, really hard situation. Um, and when he got sick, he actually got sick to the point where he couldn't work anymore. Okay. What the doctor said, at least, and what his doctor recommended. And uh, we just looked at each other and we're just like, what are, what are we going to do? Yeah. Um, and at that point, it just, I don't remember exactly how it happened, but I just remember it came very clear and very evident that we needed to turn to the thing that I was really passionate about. I mean, he's really passionate about music, but yeah. th that just made me click since I was going to be the one no longer staying at home, but supporting her family. And yeah. um, so it's the one thing we shared. Yeah. Like <laughs> primarily, two you know, crazy people. Yeah. We started a right. A, pursuing music professionally and more full time. And so in that we ended up for his health, he did have to, he, part of it, he left the church where we were at in Asheville. And we went back to our church that we were at previously near Southeastern seminary where he was in school. Okay. And we started to teach music lessons 
there and we built a music lesson business and we ended up teaching a lot of students and did that um, full time. But in the midst of all of that, we both felt really passionate about uh, we were telling our students, hey, use the gifts that God's given you, no matter what it is, no matter, you know, how talented you may or may not think you are use the gifts that you have and go serve the Lord, serve church, use your gifts. And yeah. we felt like, man, we really should, you know, make sure that we're eating our own advice here oh, yeah. and just using our gifts. And so we really, we started working on music together and we realized, even though we played music together for a long time before, yeah. we never realized how easy it was to write together. Yeah. <laughs> In the middle of all that, um, yeah. a church we were serving in Raleigh, um, they had a, 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 a worship music writing group. Uh, the pastors okay. would would tell them what books the church would be working through. And several times a year, they would meet to write music according to the books that would be preached for the church to use. And that kind of one gave us a window into writing with other people, yeah. um, which is amazing. Uh, I actually um, on a forum were part of um, somebody was asking advice for, you know, how to become a better writer Man, write with other people, get to know their processes. Uh, your music will be better. They'll help point out weaknesses. It was just wonderful. Uh, but it also showed us. We, we always love songwriting. Right. But having a passion for writing songs that will be used to further the congregation's knowledge of who God is. Um, and, and in a way for them to express their adoration for who he is, just it really built into us. Claire was involved with the Nashville Songwriters Association in Raleigh. And, and we just, sure. you know, from there, we just realized this is what we need to be doing. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's what led us here to Nashville yeah. in a lot of ways. Okay, so cool. So, and you guys are currently serving in a church together, is that right? Yeah, I, uh, I'm the... So I'm an elder at our church. Uh, we we don't do a hierarchy of leadership. So I'm a co-pastor, um, okay. but I'm primarily over the liturgy, um, as well as other eldership responsibilities. Okay. I just help with the music. So. <laughs> I understand. It sounds like my wife. <laughs> I, love I, I couldn't Sing do my job without her. She's the best. Yeah, I, I completely understand that. Well, great guys, and thank you for sharing that. It's a great story and great testimony. Um. So I kind of went on your your Kickstarter and looked a little bit at at your at your project that you have right now, but your first EP is kind of where, where we're at right now with it, right? It's in the EP stage. Um, so, are you weary? Well, you want to tell us your your heart behind? I know you kind of touched on it a little bit, but you want to kind of share your your heart behind that project. So, in that time when I was struggling with my brain tumor and we'd had some really bad diagnoses and. You know, we're just, yeah. our youngest was an infant. You yeah. know, we have three kids and um, we were both just trying to survive. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, you know, there's always scripture, there's always prayer, there's always biblical counsel. But in the middle of all that, in the hard times, our minds kept coming back to the the hymns that in the songs, even, you know, some of the Santa McCracken stuff, whatnot, yeah. Yeah. that just meant so much to us and reminded us of biblical truth. Uh, for me, it was Be Still My Soul, uh, just a really yeah. great hymn that, you know, a lot of people aren't familiar with. Yeah. Um, but as we were, I have an old hymnal that I found when we first got married from the 1890s, and it's just got words. And yeah. it's a really great thing because, you know, you don't have the music and right. it just kind of lends itself to being written. and. Right. And so we would use that often to just look back and we just find such good stuff. And we just started cranking out new songs. It was almost like a, a Sunday afternoon thing we would do. Let's sit down, let's yeah. look at this song. Let's, you know, and um, when we moved here to Nashville, we got involved with the church and the, the guy leading the music at the time uh, wanted to use the songs. Okay. And, 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 and just over a period of time, we learned this is work that people value and and, and it is helpful to them yeah. and so we we felt like well you know let's let's see what the lord does with it yeah well, great so and the i think the the important thing kind of that i want to kind of cling to today is is the fact that these are retuned hymns mm -hmm. right yeah. so and and just for you know anybody anybody listening a lot of the times especially in older hymnals like you mentioned kenny um, there was not a lot of music set to these 
these yeah. hymns. You know, you had basically a, a book of, of poems. I know like uh, Spurgeon's hymnal was typically not set to, uh, you know, wasn't set to music. It was, hey, was how, how are we going to sing this song today? You know, and that's. And there was a lot of like common meters, right? So yeah. you would pick, you know, just a, a melody that you know would fit the meter for the song, play the tune, everybody sings it, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's, you know, that is definitely before the times of uh, CCLI. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and before all that, you don't necessarily have to worry about that when you can just pick whatever tune you want. Um, right. So, so the, the, the thought of it is to retuning. So basically, every song on your on your EP is an older hymn that you have retuned. So, did you change any of the uh, of the wording, or is it just straight kind of from where it was? So, if you look at uh, particularly, are you weary? Because we've talked about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, the original for that is art thou weary art thou languid okay. um is the first line you know the titles tend to be the first line i mean that song had the word guerdon in it um I which, look that up. which means actually reward it doesn't sound like a word that yeah, would mean not what i would make yeah. um but so so we ran into some of that stuff um and and what we thought is we want to make these songs feel honestly like they would fit organically yeah. in our context to because we want them to be used again yeah. um one thing that you can run into if you're just putting a you know a modern melody to an older hymn it may still not feel natural it just you know you, you can tell it's kind of been stuck there yeah. and so yeah. our goal is to try to make it feel organic and, and in some ways that means reordering the words redoing some phrases but we're very cognizant, like the whole purpose we have in using these hymns is to guard and protect the theology that they contain. And so even when we do make changes, we want to make sure those changes fit within the context of what the song's portraying, and we're not changing the meaning anywhere. Um, uh, so, uh, but now some some lend themselves even better to that than others. So the, the one um, on there, uh, <laughs> uh, Be Still My Soul, no, Maybe. wait, I'll be still my soul. Are you thinking about a four of faith? No. See, this is this is, is there, my brain right now. Is, is, is there peace is my personal favorite. That's what I like. This. You like that one? That, that's encouraging, actually. No, the second one. Approach my Approach soul. Approach my soul. That's the one I was <laughs> looking for. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've got sometimes list. Approach my brain my soul. doesn't work right. They have worked on it. Yeah. Um, but but in Approach My Soul, it's a, it's a good excuse. Come on. Uh, yeah. But in that one, uh, what we did, actually, the chorus for that one is actually the fifth verse of the song. Or the, I'm sorry, the third verse of the song. No, it's the yeah. fifth. I think. It's it is the fifth because we took what we did is we took the verses, put them together to make single verses, yeah. and then the fifth verse it was left on its lonesome. Yeah, uh, it makes a really good chorus to drive home the meaning because a lot of times in hymns that final verse the goal is to get the meaning across at the end. So it worked really well to turn that into a chorus. So we we yeah. do mix it up, we do rewrite some things. It's not just a we're going to put a new melody on the song, and it's not just let's add a chorus to an old song either. It's it's kind of we want to make it a new thing, yeah. but still portraying the same original theology and as much of the original language as we can while still giving it a fresh feel. Okay, and so in with that thought in the context of of the local church mm -hmm. what is the importance for the local church to maybe sing some of these retuned hymns hmm. i think we would say that there's a lot of reasons that's why we looked at each other <laughs> like who wants to take that one Let them out. one of the things that i think is really fun is that when we are singing these retuned hymns that we are singing songs that we're, we haven't just sung in today's day and, day and age, but we've sung them in the past. Mm -hmm. And like, for instance, the Are You Weary song uh -huh. was originally written in the 700s by St. Stephen of Marsabas in Latin. And okay. so that song was sang then. Yeah. And then it was translated um, in the 1800s to Art Thou Weary, Art Thou Languid. Okay. And it was sang by the church then. Okay. And, um, and in some contexts, context um it may be sung now i'm not as familiar with them it was a brand new song to me when we found yeah. it um but now it's still continuing to be sung by the church today so yeah. i just love that these truths are the same throughout history that i mean our god is steadfast he doesn't change his truth is still the same throughout history and in a way singing these songs from the past reflects that Come to 
familiar with C.S. Lewis's take on chronological snobbery. Yeah. Um, are you familiar with that? I, I, should I? I yeah, so Lewis I basically <laughs> argues you should. Oh, I don't know my if you're name, My daughter's I was, name I was is trying Lucy. to think to the audience here. But, my daughter's name is Lucy, so we're, we're big, big Lewis. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, but, you know, the idea that, um, uh, you know, they're speaking into things that our culture is not aware of at, at, at the time, you know, and, and Lewis says, you know, we should read books from the future. We just can't get at them. Yeah. Um, but but the fact of the matter is we are student we are students we are people of our culture and our society there are things we don't like to talk about we don't want to talk about a lot of our goals are the same and they might be misguided a little bit and so having the words from the past come in like that helps to i think steer us in directions that we wouldn't do ourselves and i mean that's i think one of the reasons that some of the hymns that are still popular and still have staying power do so because they are saying things that we you know aren't you know naturally saying in our in our own in, yeah. in our own cultural context yeah and, and just an example just just this morning i led worship for a, a pastor's conference and um we sang in christ alone you know mm -hmm. one of the newer hymns yeah. but then our second hymn was be thou my vision so right. you know you can kind of really get the same gospel the same message yeah. and um and be way far apart in how old these songs are. Um, so with the retuning, the kind of the kind of topic that I'm that we're going to kind of kind of put to the front today is we have retuning, but we also have a need for fresh brand new hymns as far as newly written hymns. Do you guys ever dive into that or or you might mainly focus on the retune? So I want to give a um a, a small commercial or whatever. Yeah advertisement for yeah. um the gettys uh with with their um hymn writing collective they have a thing called hymn writing collective and the goal of it is to uh raise up people who are writing new hymns uh, we've yeah. been involved with it since it started it's in its third semester now yeah. um but getting to network with other people and getting to write with them on fresh hymns is really encouraging it's something we do enjoy uh yeah. we've kind of fallen into this niche of of of, of retuning and rewriting but but um, we do co-write with other people, and we do we do do work on okay. writing fresh hymns, fresh worship music. Yes. Okay. So, obviously, the answer is yes, and all the above. Sure. But when when talking about retuning hymns, writing new hymns, or singing songs that we have or we already have and we know, um, how do you create a good balance? Let's let's just use at first. Let's use use it in the context of the local church. How do you how do you create a good balance between retuned, brand new, and songs we have had for generations mm -hmm. as far as what we should be singing? I would say in our church, really we try to pick songs that want that would serve the congregation well that right. go along with either what the pastor's preaching about or just the general liturgy of our service and okay. what songs best fit there. And 
Sometimes the song might be a retuned hymn by Sandra McCracken. Sometimes the best fitting song might be, um, you know, just something that's a tried and true hymn or something might be more, more modern. Um, I think that I would, I would say, I think that we really try to, we do a mixture in our church and therefore in our concerts as well. But, uh, but I think usually it's more focused on the message of the song and what it's trying to convey. Yeah. Um, yeah. Essentially, yeah. I mean, when we're talking about church music, well, honestly, when we're talking about music in general, like songwriting and even, um, we, we have to be remind, mindful of the fact that um, we're serving. We're servants. Like, that's, that's what we do. Um, and so when it comes to putting together a liturgy and thinking through these songs, um, my, my co-pastor will give me, hey, this is the passage I'm preaching through this week. And I look at it and I, I want to say, okay, how, how does what, what I'm doing help convey the centrality of what we're going to be talking about on Sunday morning? What, and that, that includes, we use a lectionary, so there's readings in the lectionary. How does it all fit together? Um, and then... You know, there are times where I really will just say, you know what, this song needs to be the way we open the, the, the service. It's, it's just, it fits really well. Yeah. And so the next thing, I might want to use a hymn. And the question is, okay, now that those two songs are together, does the retuned modern version mix well with the one we're going to do before it? Yeah. Or would that be jarring? Would it be helpful to use the original melody and that can happen sometimes and so it really comes down to to serving the congregation i think uh one thing you can run into um when when you're leading in any spiritual you know uh place like yeah. as a pastor or ministry of any sort huh? we can uh give in to our pride and let our preferences be the guide for it oh, yeah. um and, and and so but I remember your your uh, interview with Matthew. I was listening to it recently, yeah. and he was talking about humility. He was talking about humility in in you know, let's say if you're playing bass and somebody thinks it's satanic and they hate it, and you just want to be humble yeah. and listen to them anyway. Right. In the same way, you know, if I if I'm picking out songs for this congregation, it can't be the Kenny show. It can't be all my. It can't be my Spotify playlist. You right. know. Um, it, it has to be, how is this going to help? And, 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 and when you're doing that, you're thinking about the congregation, the various ages of people, yeah. you know, there, there are some ways that the, you know, uh, an original tuned hymn is going to mean so much to a handful of the older population and they need to hear that, yeah. you know, um, I hope that's helpful. I just kind of shot. Definitely. And I think of, I think of two songs when we kind of talk about this, I think of, um, on Christ the Solid Rock. I stand, mm -hmm. you know, which is also cornerstone by Hillsong. You right. Know, you've got yeah. the same thought process. So you've got yeah. two completely different generations who are singing wow. the same truth. Um, and I also think of um, Abide With Me. Mm -hmm. You know, I think of I think of the more in the indelible grace way. Right. I'm thinking that's all. But then I think of the old way. And I always think of this because the uh, the melody to my high school's alma mater was is 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 that <laughs> so i always think of both of those things i just thought of it but um when you're a lot of times when we have these conver con conversations yeah. um where our minds go to the larger church context the bigger churches with more resources yeah. but you know um when, when i served in the mountains um a lot of the people who played in our worship team were hobbyists and yeah. Some of them might even be considered beginning musicians, so to speak. Yeah. Um, in a lot of ways, the older hymns might work better because they're easier to play or the other way around. Um, and so even though you're trying to serve the congregation, you also have to serve your volunteers who are working with you on music as well. Um, I think that that's important, keeping in mind the instrumentation you have. And, you know, like a Hillsong thing, when all you have is a pianist may not work out the way you want it to. It's, you know, <laughs> you're not going to have the same experience. Yeah. And um, I've experienced that. I've experienced that almost the opposite way with, um, with Getty music. You know, I've, we, we attempted power of the cross or, uh -huh. or some of their more Celtic 
theme songs and they don't work like you say they're hard you would think they would work in the i'm kind of in more that in the mountainous alabama region so you uh, would yeah. think you would think they would work but they are are difficult whereas maybe a four chord um four chord time yeah well, yeah the, sometimes the meter on those songs yeah you know, when they change meter it can be hard it can be they can't be in and it all goes back to kind of what you what you said there at the beginning it's it is putting preference to the side you know yeah. and, and worry about okay how can we reach all generations with the same song maybe sang in a different way and um, sometimes that comes in with a new hymn or sometimes with a retuned one like you guys do so well anything new coming up um do you guys have an, a, a long a, a longer version of your of are you weary coming is that what i saw on your kickstarter like oh no that was that was all done so our kickstarter <laughs> uh, was uh, in january of last year okay. and by god's grace that went successfully and yeah. we recorded it and so it's a ended up being a five song ep just a short album of these five rewritten hymns um and I don't know if we mentioned it or not, it kind of, our in original intent was to try to find songs that have mostly fallen out of use in the church. Yeah. Um, and we use the term mostly because there is one song <laughs> that, that uh, we kind of joke and say it was an accident. It doesn't, wasn't really an accident. Yeah. It kind of was. <laughs> and that uh, it has a story all behind it as well. It's, we, but what I'm trying to say is we tried to choose songs that have mostly fallen out of use because we wanted to bring them back to use in the local church but uh the yeah. song that is an exception is the song for the beauty of the yeah. earth yeah. and to some of our friends and um, they had never heard of that tune before so I'm it was sure. new to them yeah. yeah um but I, I know that that one is still used a yeah. lot by the church today. not everyone grew up with a red baptist hymnal not everyone <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but for that particular song we Again, the long story short, there's a long yeah. story behind it, but the long story short is we really felt like it would be appropriate to take this song that's of Thanksgiving and put it in a minor key yeah. and give it more of a sorrowful tune to try to reflect thanking God and remembering yeah. the goodness of God through the midst, through through sorrow, through the pain that is ever present yeah. in this world. Um, and we wanted it to reflect that fighting for thankfulness or fighting for joy even in the midst of well sorrow and grief and things that are hard um to hopefully in the end even though there's that minor undertone throughout the song that in the end um that it would leave the listener with feelings of hope and joy that are solid and based on the truth of who god is um we like the original version of for the beauty <laughs> nothing against it uh, but we uh, wanted to to make that twist on it, so we did add that one. Um, and so this year, we're going to be our plan is to be sharing more of Are You Weary across the U.S. And then um, we are working towards rewriting, toward rewriting, toward writing um, our next project. So right now, we're in the midst of writing, and um, we're going to see. The goal is to do what? another Kickstarter next January. Um, so yeah. this year we're, we did two tours last year. Um, the goal yeah. is to, you know, travel as much as we can this year, yeah. um, all over the US and uh, perform. And hopefully uh, we're gonna be, we've already written a few songs. We're still working on it. Um, writing songs for our next project should be out next year. So thank you guys so much for um, for joining me and, and Kenny and Claire. And I thank you guys for being here and make sure you go download, stream, Spotify, wherever you can get it. Um, Are you weary? It's, it's out anywhere you can stream, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, good well, thank you guys for joining us and we will see you next time. Well, I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Kenny and Claire. If you love Retuned Hymns, I know you did. Um, if you want to look into more of them, you can find their music where they stream it anywhere. And also be on the lookout for a couple of future tours that they have coming up. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Hymnology. And be sure to stay tuned for next week for my new guest. Thanks for watching.